Thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me. I'm very honored to be here and very hospitable, and I really appreciate it. Um, this talk is actually uh, like 20 minutes long, so I think we'll still be on time. Um, so yeah, the talk title, How to Spy with Python, so easy the NSA can do it. All right, uh, let's see. First, uh, Lynn Root, um, Rogue or Roglin on, the, uh, on Twitter. And um, this is an IPython notebook, so if you're interested in all the code samples that I do, um, I'll show this link again, but it's at uh, rogue.ly slash spy. All right, so who am I? An introduction was already made, but in case you forgot, um, I am a partner engineer at uh, Spotify working on integration with um, third-party um, companies and applications. Uh, I founded the San Francisco chapter of PyLadies and have helped many other um, PyLadies start. And then I am also a board member of the uh, Python Software Foundation. All right, uh, obligatory promo. <laughs> If you uh, want to work at Spotify, uh, let me know. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> um, they send me to conferences like here. <laughs> um, all right, so also another obligatory disclaimer. Um, I am not affiliated with the NSA, FBI, CIA. Not a lawyer, not a black or white hat, and um, this is merely just a proof of concept. Um, and then so today's talk, my talk will be, uh, first I'll give about, like a historical context of um, mass surveillance. Uh, as well as what the NSA has been doing or what is publicly known, and then how you can do it in Python. Um, so what this talk is not, um, I'm not condoning what the NSA is doing, um, I'm <laughs> or how to avoid being tracked by the NSA, um, and I'm not encouraging you to spy on your friends or family or any public Wi-Fi access point. <laughs> Um, all right, so we'll start off with the historical context. Um, mass surveillance um, of, of the public has been going on for, um, since earlier, um, since the beginning of the uh, 20th century, um, with like World War I and World War II. Um, in uh, 1946, a group was made with the, U, uh, the USA, um, the UK, uh, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada called the Five Eyes Group, um, where they would sh share information that they found. Um, in uh, 1952, uh, the National Security Agency was established, and then a little over 20 years later, um, Congress actually um, passed um, a bill saying that now warrants are actually required to um, spy on people. And then um, after the September 11th uh, attacks, uh, the NSA got a lot more aggressive with um, domestic and inter international spying. Um, including um, just kind of like parking themselves within uh, telecoms um, with a widely known like the secret room in the AT&T uh, office in uh, uh, San Francisco. Um, more, uh, in the 2005, uh, the New York Times reveals that companies are um, giving backdoor access to um, the U.S. government and to the NSA. Um, and in 2007, the um, U.S. Patriot Act, or the Protect America Act, was uh, passed, um, and giving the NSA the right to um, collect communications without oversight. Um, and then PRISM data uh, was started collecting in 2007 uh, with uh, Microsoft. And then in 2008, Congress um, gave those compliant um, companies uh, legal immunity for um, spying on users. Um, and so what exactly is the um, U.S. doing, or the NSA is doing? Uh, the first buzzword um, you've heard me say is PRISM. It stands for a Planning Tool for Resource Integration, Synchronization, and Management. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> um, it mines electronic data for the purpose of mass surveillance, and it collects intelligence that passes through U.S. servers. And it, target, it supposedly targets foreigners, but it's very elusive in answering questions on whether data is collected on Americans as well. Um, another buzzword is called X-Keyscore, which is also very interesting. Um, it's a digital network intelligence exploitation system, and it's basically a, a federated query system that has completely unfiltered data. Um, in 2008, they had about um, up to 700 servers hosting this data, but um, they've since built a lot of data um, centers, so I'm sure it's a lot more um, servers right now. 
And basically it gives like the NSA agents or users the ability to uh, query information that um, PRISM has collected. So um, you're able to see email addresses, um, the, your targets like activity on the internet, uh, phone numbers, HTTP traffic, you can extract file attachments. So um, it's pretty scary, it's pretty alarming, and um, I'm concerned. <laughs> So, but I was curious, like, if you can do this with Python. It's actually pretty fun. So, um, uh, first, I have to actually look the part. Okay, so I brought my little hoodie to look like a hacker, right? Right. Okay, here we go. All right. All right, I'm ready now. All right, so the tools that I used, um, it's all Python. I used Escapey, which is a Python package for... Um, for uh, sniffing and manipulation packets, uh, manipulating packets. Um, Geo, uh, the PyGeo IP um, package is um, uh, an API for uh, GeoIP databases. Um, then a GeoJSON, which is just a Python binding and utility for GeoJSON. And um, lastly, uh, the Python nmap, which is just a Python wrapper for nmap. Um, a quick introduction to Scapy because I use Scapy predominantly during this little exercise. Um, from Scapy.all import star. I really hate this import star. Come on, <laughs> but it's the documented way to use Scapy. Anyways, um, so here's a, um, a, like you sniffing a, a pa um, like ten packets actually. Um, this is basically like Wireshark via Scapy. Um, I'm sniffing on um, the interface EN0, uh, which is uh, my uh, wireless, default wireless, and I'm filtering for TCP activity on port 80, and I'm only gonna get uh, 10 packets. So um, A returns um, 10 TCP packets, um, and it gives you a barf of information, pretty much. Uh, so what exactly do you do with this? Um, so here's what the first packet looks like. Um, it's a little bit more digestible, and then Scapy actually has this awesome like just show function where it's a, a little bit more pretty. Um, let's see if I can scroll. Yeah, so you can see the um, Ethernet connection um, from source to destination MAC address, um, IP address um, and ports, and then like the TCP information. Okay. Then next. All right, so um, query one. So now that you know a little bit of Scapy, um, this is like a, a when uh, the Guardian newspaper um, uh, went public with what the NSA was doing, um, they had like a bunch of example queries that you can do uh, with X key score, and this is one of them. Show me everyone that has searched for this certain term. So let's try it out. Um, so I'm using um, a stored PCAP file. Um, I actually. Um, uh, made this activity and then just saved it for later because anything that you do live always fails, right? Um, and so this is how you do it online. Um, if you didn't do from a save file, here's the filter. You TCP and host uh, search.yahoo.com and I'm limiting to uh, 30 packets. And so packets, what it looks like, you know, 30 TC or 300 TCP packets. And then a little summary. A lot of packets. You can see that, like the source uh, IP and the destination IP, it's a HTTP uh, protocol and some um, some flags like SYN, ACK, and, and whatnot. Um, and so I'm picking a packet number 79, showing it, and um, a little bit better than the dump of information. And you can see down here is some raw data. So let's take a look at what this raw data looks like. I'm using a function called git layer, raw. Um, there it is, there's the raw layer. And then, so I'm gonna parse it a little bit. This first uh, query for packet 79 uh, returns that I searched for Madrid through Yahoo. Second query, I love chocolate, that's what I searched for. Third query, my favorite coffee that I spelled incorrectly in San Francisco, but um, this, uh, this, is, this shows you that you're able to like, parse, easily parse queries um, um, from, from packets. Um, note that I'm using Yahoo here instead of uh, Google, because Google encrypts everything, it goes over HTTPS rather than HTTP. All right, so that was the first query. You just wanted to know like, how you can find um, a certain term um, from um, the packets that you sniffed. 
Second query from um, X key score, um, show me everyone from X country that has visited Y extremist forum. Now I didn't really want to visit an extremist forum, so we're just using like a dummy host. <laughs> I didn't want to be on their list. <laughs> Um, so again, I'm using a sample um, HTTP PCAP file. Uh, packets, I got 41 TCP packets and two UDP packets. Um, showing it, let's see. Um, just another um, raw, uh, raw data. We're gonna take a look at what it looks like. Here's it pretty printed a little bit. And um, so just you basically like, is my search term, in my, is the search term in my packet, pretty much. But what's interesting is I made a, um, sorry for the awful CSS, um, but I made a little uh, function called traceroute, and it, I basically get all the IP addresses from the uh, packet, and I pass it through this traceroute, and um, here's all these, these um, IP addresses, that, that the hops that it takes from, from the source to the destination of the packet. Then I'm using PyGeo IP to take all those hops and get the lon longitude and latitude um, coordinates for uh, each uh, IP. And then so you know I get a pair, uh, a bunch, a list of pairs. And then I'm using a GeoJSON to actually create a JSON file. And then you can see this um, specific to a GeoJSON Geo type, but uh, you can see that like I have coordinates and the, the type of um, line that I want to draw. Now, if this works, you, uh, you can kind of see it, but like this is the actual trace route of um, the source to destination. And what's interesting is um, it originated, I believe, um, somewhere in Europe and ended up in Europe, but it obviously passes through the US. So you can see like the NSA, they want to search like, or, or keep track of everything that passes through the US. So um, even if you're going from a foreign country to foreign country, the fact that you're passing through the, um, the United States, you probably are being um, spied upon. All right, so third query. Um, give me all emails with X in the body of the email. I'm using a sample SMTP uh, packet, but you can filter with just like Port equals like 25. And so on um, the summary of the packets, um, uh, you might, you can see some like um, DNS like uh, stuff. And then, um, so I'm picking a packet 11. You kind of see the raw load at the bottom. If you look closer, um, it might look a little bit familiar. I'm just taking the actual load part. And that kind of looks like it's encoded. So I'm gonna um, use base64 to decode it, and obviously it's an email address. Um, I'm gonna uh, try and decode the next packet. Um, some encoded string, when I wanna decode it at the base64, it's a, it's a password. So I wonder what the next packet will bring. Can you guess? It's the dude's password. <laughs> So this is just an, an, uh, an email uh, packet that you can actually get it, um, through SMTP. Um, the, the dude uh, put this packet up um, publicly, so he, he was aware that he's showing, basically showing his password to the world, so I'm hoping that he changed his password. Um, so um, again, sorry for the uh, CSS malfunctions, but I just made a quick function to take packet and filter um, out by string. So I'm gonna take the email packet and I wanna say, oh, return me this email if it has the word attachment in it. And um, there we go, a query found. So let's see, if you scroll down, here's the email, it says, I sent you SMTP PCAP file, find the attachment. There you go. Okay. Now query four. Give me a PGP usage from Z country. It's a little bit more scary. Um, I just have a sample PGP email. Um, you could have sniffed this um, if you wanted. Um, I'm reading it, and this is, this is what it looks like, just simple Python. Um, when you PGP encrypt an email, the headers and stuff are not encrypted, it's just the body. So you can see the headers in plain text. Um, and then this is what you search for if you want to know if, it, if it's a PGP email. Uh, per the RFC 3156, uh, a PGP encrypted email has to have that string 
in it. And of course, um, since it is a PGP encrypted email, it returns true. Um, so I made a couple of functions that they are too big to put on, on here, but it's basically parsing the headers of the email and then um, and getting like the IP addresses of the received um, um, headers. And so I got those three um, IP addresses. Um, and then I'm, I'm trace routing it again. And it's gonna output a GeoJSON file. So now we um, um, trace routed an email from, it, it went from Germany to San Francisco and you can see it going back and forth a bunch, but um, this is where you can locate a, um, uh, PGP encrypted email. Um, all right, so query five, show me chats for X user during Y timeframe. Um, again, Scapey, I'm using a sample one um, of a Skype uh, an IRC PCAP file. If you wanted to um, sniff it yourself, you just um, filter by the protocols of the chat that you want to focus on, like um, XMPP or Jabber or IRC or whatever. Um, so I have a lot of packets, TCP, UDP, ICMP, and some other packets. Um, the, this is like all of them, <laughs> a lot. And then um, now I just kind of pretty printed it a little bit with um, Scapey's like a Sprint F, um, um, not, well, Sprint F filter. And um, you can kind of see some text there. So what I did was I made another little wrapper function of um, um, filtering the packet by a certain string that I want. And so I am searching for the user Emmerich. You can see the use conversations in plain text over IRC for this one user. Um, if you happen to see like a lot of hex strings, it's probably because the connection's over SSL. Finally, my last query. Find all exploitable machines in Z country. Now, I'm not gonna tell you how to exploit machines or where you can find information on exploiting machines, but if you have a database of um, things that are exploitable or things that have like exploitable bugs, then, um, then this will be <laughs> So I'm using Nmap. Um, I'm creating an Nmap uh, port scanner. I'm scanning my own website from port 22 to 443. Um, it returns like the command line that you would use if you just did directly from the command line, and then all this information here. And so here is the host address, of, or the IP address of uh, Roglin, and you can see it uses, uh, it's a Linux kernel, it's a Ubuntu Linux, uh, on port 22 it uses OpenSSH, and it uses this particular package, this version of OpenSSH. So if you happen to know that there's a bug in OpenSSH, you can exploit it. Um, you can do a port scan and then find one that matches and then go ahead and do your exploit, uh, exploit on that. Here we go. All right, so um, here is my IP address. And then, let's see, will this work? Um, I am uh, mapping my IP address again. I'm trying to find where the actual exploitable machine is. And again, a geo, another GeoJSON. And then here is the output of the GeoJSON that I just created. And uh, you can see that it is located, if I scroll out, that the, um, my machine is in Germany. So it's, it's not that difficult to find where exploitable machines are. Um, let's see. All right, so I showed you six queries, and I showed you that um, there's been quite a historical precedence on uh, mass surveillance um, because of uh, the five eyes and uh, the growing um, abilities of the NSA. And so I, I hope that you leave with the notion that the NSA is pretty much spying um, it's kind of like how you would get on the no-fly list <laughs> of the USA, but it's really just how to implement uh, PRISM and X-Keyscore with MS on it. Thank you.